At around $70 US, this little 35 millimeter f1.4 APS-C manual focus lens from TD Artisan punches above its weight, which is just 180 grams or 0.4 pounds, around the same as your average apple, but with more resolving power. It comes in black and silver, and it's available for Fuji X, Sony E, Canon M, M43 Leica L, and Nikon Z, which is what we have here. And I'll test it on both a full-frame Nikon Z camera, an APS-C format, DX in Nikonese, Nikon ZFC. So let's check it out. The TT Artisan 35mm f1.4 APS-C lens is undoubtedly one of the smallest and lightest prime lenses of this length, designed for APS-C format mirrorless cameras. First, 35mm on APS-C approximates a focal length of around 50mm, 52.5 to be precise. This is the second TD Artisan lens I've had a chance to review. Again, TD Artisan will let me keep it, but besides this review, no other obligations are incurred. They won't vet this video, and as always, my opinions are my own. As with the last lens, the 50mm f0.95 APS-C, I'll link that video at the end and uh, in the description of this video. The first thing that strikes me is the apparent sturdy build. It's all metal, and the focusing and aperture rings appear to be velvety smooth. The apertures are clicked from uh, 1.4 right through to f8, and at 16, but in between, there's a gap there, so 11 is kind of guesswork. The filter thread is 39 millimeters. As with other lenses from this company, the 35 millimeter 1.4, it comes with this screw-in lens cap, which is really less than practical in use. The lens doesn't come with a lens hood. TD Artisan does, or did, make one and I requested and received with my copy this little guy but in the interim according to their web page it's sold out and no longer in production that's really quite disappointing because for five dollars the metal hood came with this little snap-in cap it's a bit fiddly due to its size but it was quicker to use than the screw-in one I checked with TD Artisan and indeed there's no plans to produce more of these going forward. So <laughs> that's that. As far as the lens elements, there's seven in six groups and 10 diaphragm blades. We'll see how that affects bokeh in photos to follow. Of course, there's no electronic contacts whatsoever on this lens. So no information from the lens is communicated to the camera. So you will not get the f-stop recorded. Let's get right to it. After all, <laughs> the proof is in the pudding or Perhaps in this case, apple pie. <laughs> Let's start off with this target, with the proviso that this was downloaded from the interwebs and printed on a professional quality printer, but still, it is what it is. I think we'll be able to draw some inferences from it anyway. So here we are, starting off at 1.4. Here's the center of that target. And you can see right off the bat that we've got some pretty serious vignetting here wide open. And if we look in the corners, you can see, obviously, it's not as sharp as in the center here. So let's compare that now to the next one, which of course would be F2. So we can see it's quite, we're quite a bit brighter here, right from the get-go. There's a comparison with the center. And we can also see that the center is much sharper at F2. So quite a bit of change there already. You can see here in the top left-hand corner, you can actually see the texture of the paper in the um, F2 version. And again, let's look at our corners. So we're doing much better already in the corners, even at F2. Let's move along here and compare now our F2 with our 2.8. Yeah, I think you can say that um, we're a little bit sharper at 2.8 and the corners are doing much, much better. In fact, 
with the 2.8 version, we can see our corner is a little bit sharper. I think that shows up there. And again, the center, we are noticing some a little bit of chromatic aberration. We can see there in that bottom screens, whatever we want to call them. And the corners are, yes, I would say that the corners are just a little bit sharper now. Now at four and 5.6, let's compare. Starting to look pretty good now, I think, overall. Look in our corners. Yes, I think 5.6 is a little sharper in the corners. So it quite comes into its own now, I think. And if we compare these corners, I should point out that we can already see barrel distortion all throughout here. So the lens has barrel distortion, no doubt about it. Now we're gonna look at 5.6 to F8. Let's look in the center here. Yeah, I think F8 really looks like the sweet spot as it is in so many lenses. And if we look at our corners here, not that much difference, but I can't see that much difference, if at all, between F8 and 11 now. Let's look in the center and the corners. Finally, let's compare F11 to F16 see if we're starting to see any diffraction at f16. I'm not sure. I can't really see anything other than the bit of chromatic aberration that we noticed earlier. So that's the more technical side of things done and dusted. Okay, let's move on to this little arrangement of objects here to see what uh, information we can glean from this. Starting off, of course, at 1.4, F2. Again, we can see a huge difference there in terms of the vignetting on this uh, wide open shot here. And as we move on to F2, that clears up a lot. 2.8, 4, 5, 6, 8, 11, and 16. And we can see there's a, as I said, you kind of guess on F11, so that might be a little more than F11 towards uh, the F8 side. And finally here, if we're, if we're going to compare these, obviously we can see simply we get more depth of field, <laughs> which is quite obvious from there up to there. You know, once again, I have to say F8, things really do start to look nice. Okay. So now let's get on to some actual out in the field shots. First, this image will give you a pretty good idea of what to expect if you try to shoot with this lens on full frame FX. Major vignetting. And you can also see at 1.4, it's pretty soft in the middle, although it gives quite a dreamy effect. And in fact, <laughs> maybe this might work, this vignetting here, but this is on APS-C or DX mode. Again, very dreamy effect, very soft, and still some amount of vignetting, although this here is not vignetting. It's um, a branch in the background or a large leaf. Here, again, at 1.4, this one, for some reason that I can't uh, explain, uh, comes out a little bit sharper. It's certainly less uh, less of a dreamy effect here. I think it more had to do with um, the light hitting the lens because, of course, I wouldn't expect that the coatings are very sophisticated on this lens. Here we have some Salal leaves, and I like this. I like this effect here. We can see that it's quite soft, but very nice looking. Let's have a look at a portrait. Again, here at 1.4, I think quite quite a nice looking image. And, you know, softness in portraits, more flattering than the clinical look of modern lenses. Okay, here we have a couple of street shots that I can show you. And here, because I made notes, <laughs> this is what you'll have to do if you want to keep a record of your f-stop. I know that this was shot at f4. So that's what we get at f4. And it's, it's quite a nice looking image. You know, it's a little bit, little bit softer uh, in the corners. There's no doubt about that. 
I wanted to um, shoot this in particular to show that um, indeed that there is barrel distortion and it really shows up here in these pipes and this one I can tell you was shot at f4 250th of a second not too bad corners are at the extreme corners a little bit of softness but the center I mean you can see the texture in the bricks here the last image that I'll show at least in this um, section is this that was shot at 1.4 so we can definitely see at 1.4, we can see the vignetting, very soft corners, 1.4, so of course there's fall off there, and the vignetting. That's it for that show and tell. I'll put a gallery towards the end of this video, and you can look at uh, some more of these images. How do you like them apples? <laughs> Please do let me know in the comments, because um, I'd love to know what you think of this little lens. That's a semi-technical examination of the optical characteristics of this lens through its aperture range. But I'm not really sure that the technical characteristics would be the deciding factor as to whether this budget lens is worth its obviously attractive price. Perhaps the term character might be more appropriate, as much of a catch-all that that term has become. But besides the attractive price, this lens, like the 50mm f 0.95 brings something quite different. Let's say a different palette, an alternative to the sometimes clinical look that comes with ultra sharp lenses. In particular, I really enjoyed shooting on the street with this lens. After my initial forays, I'd have to say the best approach would be the old dictum F8 and be there. So assuming you have reasonable light, you set the lens at that tried and true aperture, adjust your ISO and shutter speed accordingly, and the results are really good. Not to forget that this lens can bring the same kind of characteristics to your video projects. Perhaps these clips here will give you an idea of what's possible with this great little budget lens. If you found this video helpful or entertaining, please do give it the old thumbs up. That really helps the channel grow. And if this is your first time here, please do consider subscribing. We'd love to see you again. In the meantime, take care, cheers, and we'll see you later.